This episode and all of our DroidCon NYC coverage is brought to you by Verimatrix Cybersecurity, protecting the applications that drive the digital economy. Learn more at VerimatrixCybersecurity.com. Thank you for joining us, uh, Siddiqa Nefrikar from Qualcomm. Um, we're here at DroidCon New York. We're talking about all variety of different topics, and one in particular that I wanted to talk about, actually, since you know we had this discussion before at Qualcomm AI Day a couple mm -hmm. of months ago, but I didn't have a chance to talk to you then. Now, finally, I get to ask you some questions about that talk that you did there and you also did here, some very interesting topics that you um, discussed today. So why don't you just first tell our audience, you know, what is it that you do at Qualcomm? Oh, sure. Oh, thanks, thanks, Michelle, for actually inviting me and, and doing this with us. Uh, you'll tell the audience a lot more about Qualcomm AI Hub, which is what I work on. Uh, I build the Qualcomm AI Hub along with the team. Um, and, and the goal of this product is just making on-device AI extremely accessible to all developers. Uh, all of our customers, our OEMs, our you know, ISVs. Um, this idea of you know, running AI is pretty well known because of cloud, but running AI on the device is still sort of not that popular just yet. I mean, it's become more popular than two years ago, but just yet. And that's what we are simplifying. Uh, any developer can bring any model uh, and run it on Snapdragon and Qualcomm platforms within a matter of five minutes with five lines of code. Um, and we just want to make this process better and better so people think of on-device AI as the first thing they do before even cloud. Mm -hmm. So let me take a step back a little bit. Can you tell us about like what kind of feedback or complaints you heard from app developers that led Qualcomm to create the AI hub in the first place? Um, all of us, uh, we, we all, the team also did a lot of you know, work around uh, deploying AI models on device. Uh, and I'll tell you just from our story and the stories of our customers uh, who are you know, predominantly app developers, uh, they, when, every time they took a model and they tried to get it running, uh, oftentimes they would come to us and they would say, I, I don't know where the model is running. Uh, how can I get it to run fast? That's the first thing, if they, if they at all got it running. Um, even prior to that, they would say, the model's just, my app just crashes. Uh, I don't know, it's giving me some error called operator. What, what the heck is operator? It's not supported. Um, or, you know, the latency, the model is running, but it just takes too long to give me a result. Or uh, the model's running, but the accuracy is not great. I, I have not done anything different. Uh, how do I debug this? Uh, and we realized just the process of actually getting a model to work on the device was not as clear in the minds of the developers, uh, in spite of so much documentation being out there. Um, they would often come and ask us, so what is the framework that I should use on the device? I'm an Android developer. Should I be using Onyx, TF Lite, QNN? What are these things? Um, and it was just so many choices, so many options that it, it was difficult to get started. Uh, most of the developer would just abandon on device and say, hey, you know what? We know how to do this on cloud. We'll just do it on cloud um, and end up paying per inference cost there on the cloud, right? Um, that's what led us to uh, thinking about, can we make this journey easy for developers? Uh, and it gave birth to Qualcomm AI Hub. Yeah, I totally get you there. Like, just with how rapidly things are advancing in the field of machine learning and now generative AI, you know, as an de app developer, especially Android app developers, with how many things they have to keep up with already, having to tack <laughs> on a whole other branch of development to learn about, is just, I just can't say it's anything but un overwhelming. So um, I kind of want to ask you now, like, after you launch this AI hub, what kind of feedback are you seeing from developers who have already begun testing and deploying features using it? Um, the very first feedback we get, get is, uh, this is so great that we don't have to keep a rack of devices on the table uh, to con constantly test, because that's one of the most costliest part uh, of their development, to actually maintain all these devices to do testing across you know, previous generations of devices, future generation of devices, uh, they, can use, they can come to the platform with one model, target the Snapdragon Qualcomm platforms, all of them, and, and run the model and be confident that it'll work. It'll work with great performance. Every time they retrain a new model or train the same model with, the, with new data, they just push a button and you know, almost CI, CD is done for them. Um, so they are very excited about that. We have seen developers who never knew about on-device AI come and try that. Um, I, I told the story of full track today. 
uh, where they have been wanting to deploy a model on device on Android and they were just not able to do it. Uh, they came and they tried their models on AI Hub and they went and deployed it and they got 1 million downloads overnight, right? So that's sort of a huge success story. Uh, it's inspiring not just mobile app developers, while we are talking about Con and Android, it's also inspiring you know, IoT developers who are, uh, who are pretty new in the field of even understanding uh, AI, uh, compute developers, laptop computers. So we are seeing a lot of, uh, hey, can I, can I have a system where I recurrent, you know, every time I have a model that I develop uh, on the cloud, can I push it to the device? And that's becoming a go-to because that just, like I said, it saves time, money, uh, it's private, so they are extremely excited uh, by using the compute that it's that is in the pockets of all of all of the their users. It's great. I'd like to actually ask you to elaborate a bit more on why developers should care about pushing these AI workloads more on device, because you know mobile devices they are thermally constrained, they're battery constrained, mm -hmm. performance constrained. Not a lot of devices, or at least a lot of devices, don't have the highest end. Snapdragon mobile chipset. So why should developers care right now about moving a lot of these, especially generative AI workloads, mm -hmm. towards on-device? Um, generative AI, you know, we've been, I've been talking with my colleagues at the booth here, which is, uh, it is such a cost. If you think about it, all of us are running ChatGPT, all of us are running, you know, all cloud and all other, but there's a cost for every inference that we do. Uh, and someone has to pay for it. Right? It's uh, today a lot of those things are free, uh, but at the end of the day, it's 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 an it's an infrastructure that has to be sustained, and and there is a lot of financial implication to that. Um, that goes away if we successfully manage to run models on the device, uh, because it's private, because it's on your device. Uh, it gives you a sense of security. Is it's it's uh, great for environment because you're not burning the data center, right? Like, and then consuming like a, all that water. Yeah, so it's it's really um, something that all developers should think about doing first uh, because it, it helps move away from this model of per inference cost. It lets you keep your user's data very secure on their device so you can offer a true sense of privacy to them uh, and you can actually get the models to uh, perform really well. To your point, yes, there are devices uh, which may not be capable of uh, you know, running LLMs, um, which are older devices, but then you still can have a hybrid approach. You can have certain devices tap into the cloud while the higher end devices are actually working on the device. As uh, models become more mature, uh, you know, while we see silicon becoming more mature and more powerful, our algorithms are also becoming more mature and compressed. As these models get smaller, uh, even the older devices are going to start becoming very powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, and the models will run on those devices. So uh, the, the sooner the developers get on the journey of on-device, the sooner they can benefit from this uh, as both, both sides, the research on silicon and the research on algorithms progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot of focus and talk on generative AI models, but those aren't the only kinds of models that are available on the AI Hub. Can you talk about some of the other machine learning workloads that develop, developers can deploy using the AI Hub? Uh, we call a whole bunch of models uh, classical models. These are mm -hmm. segmentation, convolution, ResNet, CO-LOS, all of those detection models, uh, which are very, very popular today uh, in a lot of applications as well as IoT. A anything to do with detection is very, very popular. Uh, we also have you know, Whisper and, uh, and SSDs and you know other kinds of uh, generative, not generative AI, but you know advanced AI uh, models as well. Uh, basically, covering a variety of categories, which allow developers to build interesting applications um, around you know, their usage of uh, by users of features which attract AI. And by using the AI Hub, you can not only test, but it also helps you to take advantage of the specific hardware blocks within the mobile chipset to run them optimally, is that correct? That's right, that's right. So, so like, uh, there, are, there are gaming developers, for instance, and they have very specific con constraints. They're run, running a lot of processing on the device, um, especially with you know people, multiplayer games. At that point, you want to really block out the GPU. You don't want to touch it, you want the workload to run. Uh, on the GPU while you, you tap into the NPU periodically for, for AI, or maybe in some scenes continuously. Uh, and AI Hub lets you do that. You can, as a developer, come in and say, hey, I want to just target this block. 
uh, and let me see what happens. Uh, that allows them to optimize. They sometimes can optimize the models on their own as well, which is great. So it, it can, um, in some sense, bring out the real scenario that they're targeting on the device. You brought up gaming. That's something I actually wanted to ask because um, you know, I have several very high-end Qualcomm Snapdragon-powered devices, but from what I see, there's not a lot of particular Android apps that take full advantage of that performance, mostly because I think a lot of developers see that there's so many, such a huge variety of devices with not just Qualcomm chipsets, but also from competitor chip, um, competitor chip makers. So developers you know, at this conference are creating apps for all different kinds of That's devices. Right. So how do you convince those developers? Why is it important? Why should they go ahead to use AI Hub to deploy optimized AI workloads that you know are working really well on Snapdragon devices? What? Why should they only? Why should they consider this in the first place? Yeah. So that's a great question, uh, and very few people ask that. So I'm glad you did. Um, uh, AI Hub uh, leverages uh, all the open source frameworks. So it's built on top of you know, TF Lite or uh, Onyx. Um, and this really means the artifact that you produce is going to work on other devices too. Uh, what we can't promise is, is it will work that phenomenally performant as it, as it does on Snapdragon, but it will work pretty well. Uh, we also have Google Pixels, actually. They exist on AI Hub. You can, you can try those. And the idea is exactly what you said. As a developer, you're making my life hard if you're saying that, oh, do this thing for Snapdragon and Qualcomm and then figure out the rest. Um, we don't want to do that because we understand it's an ecosystem and, and they have one app that they push out to all OSs, uh, all platforms, and they want to push out one model. Uh, and we want to make it work. And, and that's why if you get an artifact, it should work on all the other devices too. Okay, Same thank reason. you. Great answer. Um, I guess the final question I wanted to ask is, what do you see as the next step for the Qualcomm AI Hub? Or like, what are some remaining pain points that you would like to see addressed or that will be addressed? Um, that's, that's, uh, you'll get a sneak peek into some of the things that we, we may be building. Um, uh, so a few things that we've heard from people, I mean, the classic, can I cust customize the model? Uh, that's a classic one. Can I retrain the model? We have, we have asked, developers have come and asked us about the workflow because, again, they have to go and set up the infrastructure somewhere else. If it would be seamlessly done, that would be great. Uh, quantization is a, is a workflow that's very much asked for and it's going to come real soon. Uh, so developers can, with you know, a few lines of code, quantize the model um, without actually setting up any of the infra. We'll do it for them. Um, that's one big one. Uh, applications, and we've been approached by many developers saying, hey, can we actually, for two things. One is we have some models that we would love to highlight on AI Hub, uh, and we have some applications that we would love to highlight on AI Hub. So we want to actually open this up slowly to the community so they can contribute back, uh, and the ecosystem will grow even further. So these are some of the um, sneak peek near term. I'm not telling you far, far away, but near term and, and very practical ones. Uh, mm -hmm. That'll benefit the ecosystem at time. Okay, well, thank you very much, Siddika, for you know, taking the time to talk about Qualcomm AI Hub. And I know you just got done doing a talk about this very topic, so I know you must be <laughs> exhausted <laughs> racking your brain over AI all day. You know, it's, it's a fun topic. I think uh, I, I was saying this to everybody. The best thing that AI is doing is saving our time. So, you know, anytime I'm preparing for a talk, I'm using AI actually for speaker notes and things like that. So uh, I think AI is, it's, it's fun to talk about this topic. It never tires me as much. I agree. Thank you so much. Thank you.